Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the new features in Unreal Engine 5, what you need to know, as well as the major differences between Unreal Engine 5 and Unreal Engine 4. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that you need to know is to get the early access version of Unreal Engine 5, you head over to the Epic Games Launcher and click this Download Early Access. And once you have that, you'll get your little shortcut on your desktop. The first thing that you're gonna notice right off the bat is how fast it loads. Not only for the actual project itself, but, but for the uh, little project creation menu here, which is also uh, redesigned just like the engine. Um, we have our recent projects here, uh, our games, film, videos, and live events, architecture, automobile, product design. So if we head over to our games here, we have all of our basic templates, everything that we're used to. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a basic third person project. Just like that, I've created the project. You will see how fast it loads. All right, so right off the gate, you're gonna notice the UI is entirely different. Don't let this intimidate you at all because it's essentially all the same. The main things that you will notice is the bar on the left as well as the content browser are not showing. And what they've done with the left bar, which has all of the asset creation and stuff, is right here they have this little create button. So you can add lights, shapes, uh, visual effects, volumes, all that stuff. And the neat thing is if you go into all classes, you can start typing anything that you want just by hovering over the all classes here. And you can search it up and drag in a light just like that. Okay, so for the content browser, you just press control and space to show it. And you can do control and space to hide it. You can also click this dock in layout, which docks the content browser. Uh, say if you're dragging assets in and out of the level and you're working a lot on building your level, you don't want to keep pressing control space continuously. And you want it like the old style. Uh, you can always do that. All right, one thing to note is that if you are having a difficult time getting and readjusting to the UI, uh, you can actually go here to Window Load Layout, and we have the UE4 Classic Layout. So if you click on that, you're gonna see everything here as if you're using Unreal Engine 4. And I think this is actually a pretty neat feature that they have built in, and I think this is gonna help a lot of us you know, readjust to using the new engine. Anyways, I'm going to change this back to the default editor layout for Unreal Engine 5. And you're going to notice right off the bat, moving around, panning the camera around, selecting objects, W to move, E to rotate, R to scale and transform, all of the same controls. And starting off in the top right here, you know, we have, again, the content creation. We have our... Uh, content browser, blueprints, cinematics, our basic perspective, lit, and show. Uh, and then up here are our different modes. So we have our selection, landscape, foliage, uh, mesh paint, fracturing, which is the chaos, chaos destruction, and then brush editing. Then over here we have our play tab, exactly the same as, you know, in Unreal Engine 4. We have our basic scaling and camera controls. We have a little world outliner here, and then we have our details panel on the right. So it's fairly all the same layout. And if we control space to show our content browser, we can open up, say, our third person character to look at the blueprints. So the main thing that you need to know in your blueprint node is that nothing has essentially changed. It's all fairly the same. We have our character here, the skeletal mesh, animation blueprint, our camera, all that good stuff. Not a lot different in here. Uh, and if we go to our skeletal mesh, we can pull this up and I'll show you the skeletal mesh editor. It's, it's also fairly the same, not much difference here. Uh, we have our skeleton tab, our skeletal mesh, our animation blend space, and our animation blueprint. And then over here we have our physics asset. So you can expect about the same experience as you would using Unreal Engine 4 with all the identical layout. So let's go ahead and talk about the differences now. So one of the things that you're gonna notice right off the bat is in your plugins, you're going to search Mega Scans. 
and bridge the Megascans link for Quixel assets is enabled by default. So to pull up bridge, you click on the content here, Quixel bridge. It's going to have you log in and sign in with your Epic Games account. So go ahead and do that. Click the sign in button, sign in with your Epic Games account. And once you're signed in here, you can browse all the assets. When you select something, you can click download. And once you click download, you click this little add button. And we go over to our 3D assets here. And go ahead and drag that into our scene. And just like that. So, so they've essentially made the process very quick and well optimized for getting bridge assets into the engine. So again, we can go ahead and we can actually uh, scale up the quality here. And I'll talk about this Nanite here in a second, uh, but we'll just choose high quality for now. And we'll go back to our 3D assets here. And we can just drag this right into the scene here. And just like that. Go ahead and browse the asset as well. And yeah, that's uh, Megascans Bridge integrated right into Unreal Engine 5, which I think was a very smart move because surprisingly, not a lot of people were actually using Bridge in general just because of the general uh, difficulty in setting it up and configuring it for your project. But yeah, now it's made very simple as dragging and dropping it right into your game. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about the, the main new features in Unreal Engine 5, such as Nanite Illumins and the new World Composition Replacement, which is called World Partition. So first up, let's talk about Nanite real quick. So essentially, Nanite is the new way of creating LODs. It's not really an LOD system, um, but how it works is I can go ahead and pull up my Quixel Bridge window up here and we can go ahead and add a rock model. All right, so here we have this Nordic Beach rock formation. We can change the quality here to Nanite. And one thing to note is that not all of the uh, meshes here uh, support Nanite right out of the box, but you can actually enable it once you've imported the mesh if it's not showing this option here in Bridge. So once we select Nanite, we can click Download. And this is going to take a little bit. All right, and now it's downloaded. I can go here to my assets and drag this in the scene. It's gonna take a second. All right, so that definitely took longer than a second, but uh, you'll see here why. This mesh in particular, if I browse to it, we can see here the triangles are three million triangles. And if I go into wireframe, you're gonna see just that insane amount of detail in this mesh. All right, so we're gonna take this mesh here and we're just going to duplicate it a bunch of times by alt dragging. And going to notice the performance. And I'll just go ahead and delete all these walls. And notice my frame rate is starting to drop and I'll show what I'm trying to do here in a second. You can see my frame rate is 16 FPS right now. Um, because we have millions and millions of triangles on the screen, but basically we're going to enable Nanite. So to do that, we go here to browse to the asset, right click, you're gonna see Nanite, we're going to click enable. All right, so we can go back here and we're seeing we're getting over 100 FPS. Gonna hit play here and our frame rates are Around 100 FPS, it's doing pretty solid with each one of these is 3 million triangles. So it's over like 30 million triangles, I would say. And it's holding up pretty well. And if you can see here, I can look up really closely at the rocks. We see the detail of the mesh and the textures. So how does this all work? Uh, it's using the new feature called Nanite. And if we go here to the Lit tab, Nanite visualization. Go over to our overview at first. Uh, it's going to look very overwhelming here at first, but essentially we have first here the triangles window, which shows us all of the triangles here in each of these meshes. So you can see there's a ton of triangles, 3 million for each of these rocks. 
Then we have the clusters. So essentially the way it works is auto LODing all of the triangles into different clusters. And as we move far away, it's doing this dynamically and it's doing this very quickly too. And if I go back into lit mode, going to notice absolutely nothing. There's no pop in like you would have in a normal LOD. It looks absolutely the same. So it's insane how we can have this level of detail and avoid having the pop in that we see in pretty much all games, all modern games. All right, and next up we're going to showcase Lumen. And to do that, I've created here a new level time of day default template and I've dragged these rocks here into level and the first thing that you need to do is go into edit project settings and search up global global illumination and here the default method is already set to lumen and right off the bat here if I use the default atmospheric lighting controls I can do control L and you see the lighting here is all dynamic and the bounce lighting just off of the rocks is amazing so we can show you here the difference so you can see here when I change this from lumen to screen space you see it's really dark in these areas and these little cracks and when I change it back here to lumen you can see all those cracks and all of the light bounces back and we have really nice lighting in these areas. I can do control L again. We can move the lights around in any direction. And say like this. You can see here the shadows and all the bouncing of the lighting. Like this entire area, if I turn this off, or if I use screen space or ray tracing you can see all of the shadows that it has here so lumen is essentially the new dynamic lighting system that does all the work for you traditionally uh, you'd have to like, say if you had some area that was uh, too dark in your scene you'd have to drag in point lights and try to try to fake lighting by using point lights, which is really time consuming and, and not really efficient at all. But this new lighting system allows you to have completely dynamic lighting too. This is all real time. So it's really impressive what they've done here in the engine. All right, now the last thing that I want to go over is the new world partition. All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is world partition. So here is the value of the ancient demo that was showcased in the video, early access release video, uh, whatever you want to call it. Here's the entire map here. Um, now the first thing that you'll notice here is obviously the level of detail in the all the rock formations and everything. I mean, it's a really high detailed scene here, but essentially this leverages the Nanite system so again, I can go over to Nanite Overview and we can see all the triangles, all the clustering. But what I want to focus on is the World Partitioner, which is essentially the new world composition for the new world composition tool that you use for creating open world maps. So to do that, we go here to Window, World Partition. And from the first glance here, you're going to notice it looks exactly the same as world composition so right off the bat we can see all these little tiles here and we see the six tiles that I've already have loaded in so loading and unloading tiles is exactly the same as you'd expect you can right click and click unload selected cells so I left click and drag to select unload selected cells just like that and right click drag load selected cells so it's essentially the same where you can stream in only which levels that you're working on. That way you're obviously not eating a lot of performance. So another main feature of World Partition is the fact that you can take any asset and drag it from your content browser into the map and it will automatically assign it to the current tile that you are in, which you kind of already did in Unreal Engine 4. 
which makes you know creating creating your maps a lot easier for managing you know which assets are streamed in and which assets are on which level. So it's a really neat tool. Um, I definitely want to dig a lot more into to see how I can create you know tiled landscapes traditionally. But this scene in particular here, there are actually no landscapes involved, which is surprising. And this entire map is just built out of meshes, which is crazy. And again, the main driving force behind this is Nanite, which obviously allows us to have essentially dynamic LODs where we're streaming in information only when we get really up close. And as we zoom out, it's clustering all those triangles without us even noticing the difference from moving up close, moving far away. So yeah, those are some of the major features in Unreal Engine 5 that I wanted to talk about. Some of the, some of the big changes that you're going to expect. Obviously, there's a lot more of stuff added to the engine and that will likely be also be added here in the future as we get near and near to the release date in in 2022 but i will likely make some more videos uh, talking more in depth about these new features as well as going over some other topics that we didn't mention in the video such as such as land mass you know water within unreal engine 5 so guys make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below what you guys think what you guys want to see in terms of tutorials and that's pretty much it for this video hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one